Hi, my name is Landscape Architect and the principal on, uh, with Carol R. Johnson Associates Inc. Uh, in Boston. And our role on this project is to help guide the open space development. You've heard uh, Kathleen McCabe and Kathy McCabe both talk about how open space is an important part of this project as well. I'm going to uh, put the open space discussion in a little bit of context. Uh, first by talking about the character of the site. And the character of the site as it started out um, in the 1870s and 1880s was uh, a very pastoral park site and it was um, originally part of Franklin Park. I know most of you know that. Franklin Park itself is one of the important components of a system of parks called the Emerald Necklace, which is shown here. This is the map of Boston, and this is the Emerald Necklace starting at the Boston Common, going down Con Ave, and going all the way through um, uh, Fenway and Jamaica Plain to um, uh, Jamaica Pond, to the Arboretum, and then uh, terminating currently at Franklin Park, although the original plan was to go along Columbia uh, Road out to uh, Oakley Park. So that's the necklace and the parkways are the chain of the necklace and the parks are the beads. And Franklin Park itself is often referred to as the crown jewel in the Emerald Necklace. And uh, the shadow campus was carved out of that piece of Franklin Park in the 1950s. During that time, um, the, the park was designed in a, uh, originally in a, in a pastoral character. Uh, that Olmsted did that intentionally. He went to England and studied the parks there and brought that character back to the United States for the first time and incorporated it first in Central Park in New York and then in the Emerald Necklace in Boston. So the pastoral character is an identifiable component of the park. And when the Shadow Campus was built, initially right here, um, that pastoral character that you see on this map was wiped clean and um, was uh, the Shadow Campus was built. What we're hoping to do in this planning process is to allow the development of the site to include all the program elements that you've heard Kathleen and Kathy talk about, but also to bring back and heal the site to its original uh, pastoral character. And it's not a zero-sum game. We can have both. You can develop the site of a program that's needed for public health and also restore the pastoral character of the site. And that's one of the goals of the project. And um, as we move forward, uh, we're going to talk about a number of scenarios, potential ideas that came from the CM1. Uh, and to help set the stage for that, um, Tim uh, Thompson from Car Engineering is going to talk about the um, vehicular circulation that is going to help frame the way we come to the site. Oh, actually, no, I'm sorry, I have two more uh, things to mention before Tim talks. And um, that is just showing you the site as it exists now. And this is uh, Morton Street, this is Circuit Drive in Franklin Park. And um, we have a small, narrow, green edge here along Morton, and a small, uh, narrow, green edge along the internal circuit drive. And then the rest of this is all hardscape, pavement and buildings. If you go to the next, you'll see all the dark rectangles are the buildings, one of which has been removed uh, since. Um, and uh, the medium gray is all pavement. So as you can see, the majority of the site is impervious surfaces. And that's something we're actually going to work actively to improve. So uh, now Tim is going to talk about uh, vehicle circulation, how we access the site. Thank you, John, and good evening, everyone. Uh, again, my name is Tim Thompson. I'm a transportation engineer with Park Corporation. And as John mentioned, I'm just going to quickly go through uh, some of the approaches that we've been looking at for um, tra transportation circulation uh, to and from the site, and then touch a little bit on some of the parking approach, approaches we've been looking at. Um, so when we talk about transportation circulation, we're, we're talking about uh, vehicles, we're talking about bikes, we're talking about pedestrians, um, we're talking about public transit, um, and how we can get that on and off the site. Now, what you see here is uh, uh, one of the concepts that we have for roadway and sidewalk uh, layout on the site, and really what we're looking at doing um, is 
maintaining uh, the main access point to the site off of Circuit Drive. Uh, it's going to be our, our uh, looks like it's going to be our, our main uh, vehicular access point uh, in this area. So very close to the existing driveway location. What we're also looking at doing is uh, having some uh, reconfiguration of the intersection there at Circuit Drive, taking things up a little bit. Um, it's a very wide intersection right now, so we're looking at doing some slightly um, modification of, of geometric. Geometrics of the intersection to really improve safety. Uh, and what you'll see here too is we also are showing on each of these schemes a number of pedestrian connections uh, to Franklin Park and then also uh, along Run Street itself. We're also showing bicycle connections to some of the existing bike lanes that run along Warren Street um, and Circuit Drive. So as you can see, we're going to get a little sneak preview of some of the, the roadway networks that we might be showing with some of the concepts. Um, but very similar for each of these school concepts that you're going to see. Um, again, we're looking at maintaining existing main access on Circuit Drive um, and then some limited access along Ward Street. And what I mean by, by um, limited access along Ward Street um, is really restricting vehicular movements to right in to right outs. Given the volume of traffic on Ward Street, the speed of traffic, um, we feel that that's going to be a, the safest approach for access on Ward Street. So, again, some of the other. Um, the other concepts, similar approach we're taking with that um, circulation. Now one of the themes you'll notice when um, we start talking about the four concepts that we've developed is you'll notice that there is um, a significant increase in the amount of green space on the site and a reduction in some of that service parking. And one of the concepts that we're looking at to help uh, introduce more green space um, and reduce that on surface parking I was looking at putting parking underneath some of the building footprints themselves. So what you see across the top here are a number of strategies for how parking can be incorporated either at ground level or below ground level. And then what you see along the bottom is, as Kathy mentioned, this site has quite a bit of topography that we have to work with. So actually using topography to our advantage to help um, introduce some of this parking at grade level, uh, where you're able to enter the parking facility at grade level, but the building is still able to sit um, at grade level on the opposite side. Um, and with that, I think I'll hand it off to uh, Mary and uh, Carolina. We're going to go through some of the concepts. Thank you, Tim. And my name is Carolina Carvajal um, with CRJ IBI Group. Um, so I'm part of the landscape architects on the team. And I'll start off by saying that all of these. Um, concepts that we're going to show to you are just ideas. There are things that we heard from you from the community meeting one, and there are things that we have included in the concept. So we're going to start off with concept number one, and it's Village Commons. Um, Kathy mentioned earlier um, about the green built overlay district, which in this case is running along Morton Street. You will see that on all of the concepts that we're going to show to you tonight. Um, we do have a large open space in the middle and then some connections. Connections are a big word and integration are, were big words that we heard from you during the last community meeting and we wanted to make sure that you guys um, see that reflected in the ideas. We'll go to the next. Here is the bird's eye view of the village common idea. And uh, we'll move to the next one. And we're going to be showing some diagrams like this tonight. Um, the yellow is supportive housing. The beige color is existing services. Um, the orange is expanded services. And then the blue is health and institutional services. So if we move on to the next, we can see the connections the Greenville connection along Morton Street, and then filtering through the site and into the park are these pedestrian connections that will lead you into the park. This scheme has uh, the entry, a very large open space, in which we can locate the playground that you suggested last time, the community gardens, and all of those outdoor uses that you would like to include. Um, it also has some internal spaces in between the buildings. And uh, taking advantage of the topography, we kind of conceal the uh, housing, the supportive housing 
on the far right, since Morton Rock is um, it's a, it has a significant rate change, um, the housing can be concealed as well. Okay, if we move on to the next one, these are some before and after views um, that just show a little bit of at, at, at eye level what you will see um, in Morton Street and uh, at Circle Drive, and you can see the significant difference um, in these before and after views. I'm Rachel Van Am from Paul Lucas Architecture, and I'll be presenting two schemes along with Carolina as well. In this concept, we call it Twitter, and you can see how we use this uh, green belt around the site to ensure this gentle transition from the park into the site. And you can hear me? <laughs> okay, good. And uh, also providing privacy from Morton Street for the residents of this site. This concept proposes multiple small courtyards in between buildings, and that will uh, provide that uh, out space for people to meet and build connections in a strong community. So it's not only shelter, it's a strong community in itself. For the next one, from a bird eye view, we can see the heights of the building that vary from two, three, four, and five uh, floor buildings, and we can see these courtyards and open spaces. For the program, the program layout of this concept acts like a gradient from public into more private, starting with the existing services on the left, the supportive uh, ex uh, expanded services, a mix of office buildings and supportive housing, and then ending with all supportive housing on the right. Here we can see the pedestrian uh, path and connections to Franklin Point, and also biking path. And in these uh, <coughs> existing and proposed one, we can uh, easily see the difference in the visual impact between what we already have and what we are proposing these concepts and how we can, as John mentioned, have both and we can blend it into the park and integrate these services and the support housing. Thank you. Thank you. Also from the green area. Um, so now we're going to see the campus concept. And this concept also has um, Okay. <laughs> That's fine. I can talk to the screens of the TV while we get it back. Here we go. Almost there. So um, this campus concept also has the Greenbelt connection and which wraps around into the site and leading into Franklin Park. It also has this integrated connections through the site from Morton Street that take you um, from Morton Street, sorry, into the site and then into Franklin Park. So you have those connections. And I just want to say that the Green Belt is composed of pedestrian and bicycle um, routes. And this is the uh, bird's eye view of the, of the concept. And we can see these connections. In here again, we located the supportive housing right where there's some great change so that it can be concealed. Um, and then if we move on to the next one, we were able to see the pedestrian connections into the park. Um, in this one, we located the large open space in the center and all the community uses um, in the center as well, which are playing off by by this large open space and into the fabulous views that you get um, into Franklin Park. The um, office or health related services, um, institutional related services are closer to Morton Street and then having this great belt as well. And we can see in the following views how some of the buildings are concealed with the grades and this is a view from the opposite side of um, Forest Hill, and this is Circuit Drive, and we can see how um, some of these buildings are concealed, and it's a much <coughs> larger green open space. And 
then the last scheme, uh, we also using this data, and it proposes two big central green spaces. We call it the, the green and the square. The green one in the center of the site sits on top of the existing structure of the hospital, and it uses its basement as parking. And um, you can see the next slide from a bird's eye view. Also the height. This scheme uses one, two, three, and four story buildings. Here we can see the program. It focuses on having the supportive housing along around this big green space with the supportive services and existing services. Here we have the offices and supportive housing. And these U-shaped buildings are proposed to be opposite. Each has its own courtyard in the middle. And here we can see the pedestrian and biking path and the connection to Franklin Park. Again, we can see the views from Morton Street and the next view from East Morton Street and the next one from Circuit Drive. 